The strongest competitor to the U.S. for gold coins is Canada. To see how gold coins are made, we took our cameras to the Royal Canadian Mint in Ottawa. There's some resemblance to the manufacture of other coins, but there are also major differences. All the emphasis is on quality, not quantity, and it starts with the raw material. Gold arrives at the mint from mines around the world in an impure form. It must be refined, which is a slow and a dangerous process. First, the gold is melted so that a sample can be taken and analyzed for impurities. These ingots may contain anywhere from 10 to 70% other metal, mostly silver. To remove these impurities, the ingots must be refined even further. So the molten gold is infused with chlorine gas. The fumes are poisonous and must be carefully vented away. The chlorine causes the impurities to separate out and rise to the surface, where they can be skimmed off. What remains is 99.5% pure gold. It's a level of purity that many other mints around the world never reach. But the mint demands even greater purity. So they cast the gold in small, flat bars to prepare it for another level of refining. Parts of the refining process haven't changed much in centuries, but others have. That includes the next step, electrolysis. Only a few mints in the world refine gold by electrolysis because it takes so long. Titanium plates must be lowered into a bath of acid. The gold bars are hung next to the plates from hooks of gold. When an electric current passes through the bath, it causes the gold particles to migrate onto the plates. The other metals will sink to the bottom. It takes two days to complete the process, but the crumb-like layer that now coats these plates is 999.9 thousandths pure gold. Some of this gold will be refined even further, but most of it will be melted and cast into ingots to make coins and bullion bars. Some moisture still clings to the gold and it must be dried off. Otherwise, the gold would explode in the furnace. The melted gold is poured through a fireproof funnel into a mold. Inevitably, some of the gold will splatter onto the floor. When you walk through the refinery, the floors are black. There's a purpose for that. Uh, if it shines and it's on the, on the floor, it's gold, and it will be swept and it will be recycled. Gold this pure is extremely heavy. Each ingot weighs 50 pounds. The market value of gold changes daily. On this day, this ingot is worth a cool $240,000.
The gold ingots must now be rolled into the thickness of a coin. But the gold would shatter if they try to flatten it all at once. So it will be sent through this rolling mill 12 times. Each time, the ingot is compressed nearly 10%. As the gold gets thinner, the pressure can be reduced. 50 tons. 40 tons. Pressing has made the gold too hot to handle with bare hands. By now, the original 11 and a half inch long ingot has been rolled out into a strip 12 feet long. It's become too thin to be lifted out by hand. but it's still too thick to make coins. So it must be pressed several more times. Both gold and silver are rolled on these mills. To avoid contamination, the machine must be washed down whenever the metal changes. Gold is now approaching the right size for coins. It must be precisely 2.87 millimeters thick, give or take just a tenth of a millimeter. Now the gold can be stamped into blanks. The blanks are now ready for the coining press. Even though gold is very soft, the coins are large and the design is intricate, so they must be struck at enormous pressure, 133 tons. That's more than twice the tonnage needed to strike a US quarter. The Mint makes less than 700,000 of these gold coins annually. This is the mint's best-selling gold coin, the one-ounce gold maple leaf, worth about $300. Every single coin gets inspected after it leaves the press by every worker who handles it. The final check of the coin's weight is done not by hand, but at an automated workstation. The process is much more efficient this way. Any coin whose weight is off by more than just one and a half thousandths of an ounce will be rejected and remelted. Because the market in gold coins is so competitive, every mint, including the US mint, looks for ways to distinguish its products. The Canadian mint stresses the purity of its gold, and it also makes innovations. One of the mint's most unusual products is a gold hologram coin. The design is struck just a few microns deep, and it scatters the light. But ultimately, it's not a gold coin's design or purity that attracts a collector. It's something more. The collector wants perfection. He's not buying an ounce of gold. What he's buying is a work of art in itself that is on precious metal, but he's buying a higher value than just the metal content. And that higher value, which ultimately is the finished coin, has to be perfect. 